a vigil, it's a rally. So ready? Climate justice now! Climate justice now! Climate justice now! Come on, hear it! Climate justice now! Good. I welcome Chad Hollister to kick it off! Thank you, Rob! Welcome, welcome. This song is called Change. It was written as we were on our way down to the inauguration in D.C. of President Obama. And uh, what we need now more than ever is change, and that's why you all are here, so thanks for being here. Imagine if we did what we wanted to do And now will we feel that we need to Swinging in the Montpelier streets, yeah. life would finally have a soulful heartbeat, and drums be drumming while we move our feet, while we move our feet, yeah. and inspiration will be making the news, instead of always singing them blues, unify what we never knew. for a change yeah. oh Lord for a change now I'm still walking but I pick up the pace I know my heart has got no time to waste and the fields are calling for a brand new day oh and a brand new way yeah. and inspiration will be making a new Just a, just a praying for a change Live life in, in your own way Hey, come on, people Are you ready for a change? The whole world, that's it Needs a brighter day It's a rally, not a bill to rob you, said Yeah, said
for a change. The whole world needs a brighter day. And everybody's just a they be a praying for just a little bit of a change. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today, but the, this rally is about you and people that care about Mother Earth. Thank you so much for being here today. And for then, once you leave here today, it does not end. There is something going on here, something pretty serious. And as long as you guys keep bringing the message that we're bringing about here today on this beautiful day, tomorrow, the day after that, the week after that, the year after that, in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now, you pass it to your children and your grandchildren. That's what it's all about. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This song was written for Mother Earth with my good friend Aaron Flynn from Charlotte, Vermont, an amazing songwriter. This is called One World Free. If we don't save it, yeah. if we don't save it, we don't save it, who else will? Yeah. And I want people to see these wonders swim these waters thousands of years after I die the earth is alive breathing waters sparkles and shines crashing falls Flowing grass and these trees that tower so high. The feeling of rain, she's coming down my face. Down my face, the living earth, she's giving grace, We're giving grace. And if we freeze these tears, can our fears still be found down, drowned in a sea, one world bound, one world free? And I want these people to know that there is a choice. You gotta believe in your own sweet voice before the last bird falls from the sky. Passion flies and doubt denies the simple truth of our time. Will this simple life be left behind if we are forced to simply survive, survive? She's coming down my face, down my face. In the living earth, she's giving grace, giving grace. And if we freeze these tears, can our fears to be found down, drowned in the sea, one world bound, one world free. See the one we're bound. 
one world free. I see the one world bound. I see the one world free. One world bound. One world free. One world bound. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Climate March, beautiful people. Thank you. Check back soon, okay? Hey, even the dogs are barking. Look at that. The dogs like it. Hey, it's pretty cool. I love all of your signs, by the way. Thank you. Amazing. This beautiful 87-year-old woman, Carol, has one that says, love your mother. And she has the biggest smile on the earth, on, on her face. Scientific fact, snow makes me. <laughs> anyway, I do like that one. So I got to play Earth Day in Washington, D.C. three years ago, just a couple weeks back. It was not like today. It was rainy. It was wet. The band Cheap Trick was very angry because it was so wet. And instead of 10, 50,000 people, there were 100. That would never have happened in Vermont. Ever. Does a little bit of rain from Mother Earth stop you, Vermont? <laughs> I didn't think so. I opened with this one, and I want, this is my last song of the day after this. We're going to bring on the wonderful Chris Gruen, one of my favorite singer-songwriters in the world. You will hear why in a moment if you do not know him. This is, I want you to sing this with me. It is one of my favorite songs, and I feel it to be very pertinent today. And here it is. Just a little bit like me, see walking in your footsteps. That's you walking in your footsteps. Walking in your footsteps. That's you kind of walking in your footsteps. Hey the Mr. Dinosaur, said you really couldn't ask for more. You were God's favorite creature, but you didn't have a future with me. Walking in your footsteps. Walking in your footsteps. Sing it right with me. Hey. See the walking in your footsteps. Come on, up here. Walking in your footsteps. Yeah, I like it. Okay. You have a lesson for us. You thought your rule would always last. There were no lessons in your past. You would be three stories high. Said you would not hurt a fly. If we explode the atom bomb, would they say that we were dumb? We're walking in your footsteps. Walking in your footsteps. Everybody, come on. That's you. You see the walking in your footsteps. Walking in your footsteps. Come on. Walking in your footsteps. Walking in your footsteps. We be. Walking in your footsteps. 
walking in your footsteps. See me walking in your footsteps. They say the meek shall inherit the earth. They say the meek shall inherit the earth. Last time. Thank you so much. My name is Chad Hollister. Thank you for listening. Thanks for supporting Mother Earth and helping everybody in the world. Not just this group right here, but the groups that are not here today. Those are the people that we truly want to reach. We all understand. We need to help others understand what is going on and how real it is from our administration and beyond. So thank you for your time. Stay tuned for the brilliant Chris Gruen. Stick around. Let's hear for Chad Hollister! And please note, the governor is not in the building over there. He lives in Barrie, so you have to make lots of noise for the governor to hear you. So let's say, climate justice now! So please make sure you visit our action tables and booths or our supporters are all out there trying to get everybody involved. This is not a one day event, it is a movement. So let's carry this home. Let's carry it outside of Mount Pelier. Let's keep it here in Mount Pelier. Let's take it to Burlington, take it to Essex, take it to Brattleboro, Putney, Caledonia County, Essex County, Franklin County, and the Mile County, what other counties? <laughs> so good, thank you all, and um, we're going to be blessed with the music of Chris Gruen. I just want to make a reference, the musicians have all donated their time to us tonight, so please support their music outside of here. Musicians make a lot of, make a lot of money by going out and playing, so this is their livelihood, so please support your local music. Thank you, Rob. How about a hand for Rob Kidd? We love you, Rob. And how about Chad Hollister one more time, everybody? Yeah, Montpelier! It's so good to see you. 
I'm glad I didn't go to DC. The rest of my family did, so I don't feel guilty, but I'm glad to be here with you. We have every reason to join forces and come out and speak about what we want, what we love, what we need. We should be meeting each other like this. We should join forces like this. You see all of these tents behind you? This is a coalition of nonprofits. I'm the director of WGDR, Goddard College Community Radio. Right over there. Your independent media resource. Tune in, 91.1 FM, 91.7 FM. It's our pledge drive. Go back there. We've got tons of gifts for you. Onion River Sports donated a bicycle for you to, for your mouth to water and want to give to us. It's called Part of It All. It's about being together. Get a little hot there. Just give us one second. Here it is. Stone in my plow, bread from the grave. Best of your words sown deep down in my veins. Raise those voices. 
voices. We all talk about wanting to change the Beltway in DC and we really do need to do that, but before we can ask them to change, we have to change here at home. There's a lot of things that we can do in Vermont. We can take more responsibility right here. So hopefully our representation is listening and uh, make sure you tell them what you want. outside the law, you gotta be honest. If you wanna live outside the law, you gotta be honest. Kids, think about what that might mean. If you don't want other people to control you, then 
be self-responsible and take control of yourself, make good choices, and bring those good choices to your community. to Chris Gruen's wife, Jael, who voluntold him to perform here today. She was a big part of this event, but she is in Washington, D.C., resisting! So, big thank you to Jael. So, anybody who ever knows her, thank her and honor her. So, ready? Climate Justice Jobs! Climate Justice Jobs! Climate Justice Shops! Come on, let me hear you! Climate Justice Shops! Climate Justice Shops! Good. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Headphone Jack! Everybody! Great to be out here today. Go Bernie. Let's give a big thank you to Chad Hollister and Chris Gruen and Rob Kidd. We're going to mix it up a little bit for you here. 
we got Chris Von Satz on guitar to help out. This first song is called Idealist. It's about environmental activism. Take idealist over ideal less. I'm a realist trying to change what real is. Feel this realness that leaves my lips. Desperate to send a message that's ever pressing and it's depressing when we see so few expressing anything with this is addressing everything. So I'm addressing what is vexing me. I guess I'm just meant. But I'm an activist, staying active and passionate. The passion innate, and I'm in it for the average against the avarice and the bad habits. It's an up to battle that we're trying to grapple with. Climbing up like scaffolding, we don't have to live as we live. That's why I have to give all I have to give. No additives or preservatives. Let's keep it natural. Back to the basics before there was capital. I'll never give up, cause I'm continuing a great struggle. Even if I can't make magic like a muggle, I'll do what I can. That's all I can do. And if you make an honest effort, I'm proud of you too. I'm nowhere near greatness, probably never will be. But I'll keep trying to improve until the day it kills me. What wills me is the people who brought the passion to what they believed in. I'd like to be a fraction. As noble as these people, always reaching high towards the sky like a steeple. I'd only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. I'd only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. Thank you. One, two, three, four. I'd only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. I'd only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. Sandra Stein, grab her, we're lucky we have her. They're most people in power, elect her. I would rather identify in hazards, using peer science and convey it to the public through the power of speech. Environmental leader, the world needs her. Energy sources need to be cleaner. We can't just stand here and banter. We must demand answers and raise standards. We can get power without getting cancer. I only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. I'd only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. His name is Van Jones, his plan goes, and a man grows, some plant grows, which tries up beside windmills, out in poverty, thereby solving two ills, fossil fuel drills, in minor hats are not needed, imagine the inner city fully seated, imagine these kids free from poverty, it's ingenious, I mean this, the scene is set, we see the threat, but you can bet your bottom dollar, it's not over yet, and I won't just let myself become complacent, releasing my potential, I am no longer late, I only hope to be as dope as these. Men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. I'd only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. Chris on stats on guitar. so much for this movement. I'm sure all y'all know his name. He might be out there. All right. His name is Bill McGibbon, filled with wisdom, still is given. It's all the fixing causes, not symptoms. Attacking companies to which we're all 
all victims. She's got a vision that's not to give it on a mission, and I'm on it with him. Divestment makes us restless. Let's put to bed this deception by universities teaching us lessons on sustainability. Not practicing what they preach, sucking on these corporations like a leech. They're trying to squeeze every last drop of oil, take every last bit of natural gas from beneath the soil. Let's look at the math here and have fear. Cause the answer is clear and the air could be too Invest in renewables is what we gotta do CO2 levels should be down to 350 ppm But it isn't easy when We're invested in companies that profit from releasing Greenhouse gases as fast as not sneezing I only hope to be as dope as these Men and women who have shown what we can do When we bring our passion and skills Let's keep rising up like windmills I'd only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. All right. I got one more person I want to talk to, talk about. This song's called Idolist. It's about some of my idols. And that includes everybody here. This next guy, he's gonna be speaking later on today. His name is Bernie Sanders, standing up to slander. Serving his constituents, not even to the rich. He's standing up for what's right, the system that's all wrong. Going against the grain where so many play along. Independent of a party, cause he's a free thinker. Not kneeling to these corporations, cause he's a bigger man than that. Man, I tip my hat to these four heroes. Each one of them chose a unique way to go about making change in a world that's deranged. And for each one of them, there's a dozen others. From Martin Luther King to my own mother, to brother Ali, to everybody in this crowd. You're the reason that I say it loud when I say I only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. I'd only hope to be as dope as these men and women who have shown what we can do when we bring our passion and skills. Let's keep rising up like windmills. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. It's an honor to be here. We've got a few more songs to play for you all. We're going to bring it down a little bit with this next one. This song's called In and Out. It's, it's important sometimes to just address, you know, how serious this is, and that's what this song's about. We're running into trouble. We're running out of time. Humans are out of line, out of sync with Mother Nature, we're out of touch. But it's not out of our hands, invert our ways we must. All things are interconnected, we must keep that in mind. Think outside the box, it's insane what you'll find. We introduce invasive species, they run out of control. Out compete indigenous populations taking a toll. We're inputting pollutants into the atmosphere, including ones that indefinitely remain out there. Sometimes I doubt whether we're intelligent. In a century, a lesser species can be irrelevant. In Inventions have led to extensive extraction Digging into the ground without regards for impacts on the earth and our health Is that not insane? We're out of our minds, out of our heads, out of our brain We're running into trouble, we're running out of time Humans are out of line, we're out of sync with mother nature, we're out of touch, but it's not out of our hands and hurt our ways we are. Our generation inherited outstanding problems, we're outmatched, so I for wanting to act, am I an outcast? Intrinsic value held within but not without, we need to expand the things we care about. Out of our inner circle, let's include all beings And not say a nerd of this destruction we're seeing Our children need clean air to breathe in And healthy food for feeding Toxins cause genetic disruption like inbreeding We're running into trouble, we're running out of time Inherently wrong, humans are out of line Out of sync with mother nature, we're out of touch But it's not out of our hands, invert our ways we must Invert our ways we must Out of 
just think what Mother Nature were out of touch, but it's not out of our hands and hurt our ways we must. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone who's here today. And, and like Lap said, this is a, this is a climate movement. All right. Here's another song about um, environmental activism. We're gonna pick it up a little bit. Do I believe in changing light bulbs and riding a bike? Yes, but do I really think that'll take us where we need to get? Hell no. We need to organize collective movements, what I'd like to emphasize. We've got numbers on our side, let's make it happen. Then the world will never again have to listen to me rapping. Just kicking in a cypher with my friends about some stupid shit. Other than that, this conscious rap thing, I'll quit. We need to fight together. Alone, we can't do shit about the climate or the weather. So let's band together and plan a better planet where there is bland or weather. The plants don't wither. Do I believe in changing light bulbs and lighting the bike? Yes, but do I really think that'll take us where we need to get? Hell no! We need to organize this collective movement's what I'd like to emphasize. Whether or not the weather is hot or cold, it don't matter. I'm working it round till I'm old, I will never fold. At this point, I'm all in, never stalling. Cause I never rev an engine, I'm down with Marx and Lenin, but never stalling. Political views constantly evolving, I'm definitely calling for a complete overhaul in the system. We could use some revolving. Does that make me revolutionary? Recognizing that the status quo is what's really scary? Fair Apparently, but not carelessly, this is something for which my parents didn't prepare me. Do I believe in changing light bulbs and riding a bike? Yes, but do I really think that'll take us where we need to get? Hell no! We need to organize collective movements, what I'd like to emphasize. Energy production is the issue at hand, but it goes much deeper than that, like oil from tar sands. The impediment is evident, it has been ever since the evidence of climate change was presented. The impediment is the precedent of a president in Congress who's elected on the premises of lobbyists with bills of presidents, pressing them to perpetuate this in effect and recklessness, they're not representing us. We can't continue with this form of capitalism and this growth on a finite planet, something has to give in. Frack this form of capitalism, something has to give in. Do I believe in changing light bulbs and riding a bike? Yes, but do I really think that'll take us where we need to get? Hell no! We need to organize collective movements, what I'd like to emphasize. Thank you. All right, we're gonna do one more quick one and then get out of here. This next song is called Get Motivated. And I wanna end on that note, uplifting note, and encourage everyone to keep fighting every single day. Thanks again for having me and thanks for everybody for putting this on. Now's the time, no more waiting. It's yours for the taking. Time to stop flaking, time to start waking, time to start making improvements for yourself and others. Through your actions, you will discover that you can get motivated. Let go of hatred, set goals and break them. Don't expect changes, make them. Success is awaiting. It's yours for the taking, no more hesitating. Get motivated. Let go of hatred, set goals and break them, don't expect changes, make them, success is awaiting, it's yours for the taking, no more hesitating. You can do a lot more than you think, the more shots you take, the more shots you sink, the more passes, the more desists, and dropping the ball's a lot worse than a miss, so you gotta keep moving, otherwise you're dead weight, but also take some time when you need it to get your head straight, what gets you going, what do you believe in, what gets you up in the and it keeps you breathing for me it's being part of this movement that's on the rise and we're trying to prove that we're capable of changing the world so keep racing towards your goals and hopping those hurdles let's get motivated let go of hatred set goals and break up don't expect changes make them success is awaiting it's, it's yours for the taking no more hesitating because we gotta get motivated Let go of hatred Cause, cause change
doesn't happen on its own. Sometimes you gotta tap into your soul, grab a hold of the past, grab a handle into action, the show into action. This boy, cause, cause, cause. Change doesn't happen on its own. Sometimes you gotta tap into your soul, grab hold of the passion, channel into action. That's bold. Cause change doesn't happen on its own. Sometimes you gotta tap into your soul, grab a hold of the action, channel it to action. That's bold. Thank you. That's all we got. Thank you so much. Wow, that's really hard to follow. Those are some great acts. I'd like to thank Chad Hollister, Chris Ruin, and Headphone Jack for kicking the event off today. And wow to all of you for showing up. This is amazing. My name's Mark Nelson, and I chair the Vermont CR Club. And I just wanted to say a few words to, uh, to kick off the event today before we get into our speakers who have a lot of really important and good things to say. First of all, welcome everybody to the People Climates Rally here in Vermont. Uh, we're one of many local climate rallies across the U.S. supporting the larger rally in Washington, D.C. today. It's important that we're here today. And you might wonder, why is it important to be here versus in D.C.? A couple of reasons. By coming today, you're showing that you are concerned about what's happening nationally, but willing to act locally. And locally is where we can work to fight a lot of the negative things that are coming out of Washington, D.C. at this point in time. By coming today, you're showing that you care about clean air, clean water, healthy forests, and healthy wildlife. All things we need to protect here in Vermont. And by coming today, you're showing that you care about the planet we leave for our children and for future generations. We need to send a message to our governor, his administration, and our legislators to protect clean air, clean water, healthy forests, and healthy wildlife, and resist what's coming out of Washington, D.C. So that's why we're here today. We're supporting the national effort, but we're acting locally. It's not a one-day initiative. Again, it's not a one-day action. It's good that everybody's here, but we need to keep working as a group. There's a lot of organizations that work together to put this on today. Please visit their tents, their booths, learn about what people are doing, get engaged. If you don't feel good about what's happening, get engaged, find something you believe in, and fight for it, and keep fighting. That's what we have to do as a group. To change everything, we need everyone. We have to remember that. So I want to say to everybody, have a great day. Thanks for coming out. Enjoy the day. Enjoy all the conversations that are going on some fantastic signs out there. Please stay for all the speakers. I don't know if you know it, but we're wrapping up the day with Congressman Welsh, Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman, and then Senator Bernie Sanders is supposed to wrap up our event today. So we appreciate everybody coming out today. It could have been a more beautiful day. Let's work hard and protect our Mother Earth and take care of her. So I'm supposed to introduce Kathy Blue next. I don't know, and here she is. She's the board chair for 350 Vermont, and she's going to be our MC today. So again, thank you all for coming and for your hard work. Hello, love warriors. Hello, climate champions. Welcome to the People's Climate Mobilization March for Jobs, Climate, and Justice. And I know you know this, but when we say people, we mean each and every one of you, no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, no matter what you know or what you can do, this is a movement for you. When we say solidarity, we are talking about solidarity, not just with the folks marching in D.C. and in hundreds of cities around the country and around the world, but in solidarity with every single being on this planet affected by climate change. 
And when we say justice, we're not just talking about climate justice or environmental justice. We're talking about all justice. We're talking about economic justice, racial justice, justice for all genders and sexual orientations. We're talking about justice for people of differing abilities and wellnesses. We're talking about justice for immigrants, justice for indigenous people, justice for workers, justice for women and their reproductive rights. We are talking about justice for all the other creatures who share this planet with us. And we're talking about the fact that climate change affects everyone and everything on this planet, which means climate justice is justice for all. And in fighting for justice, what do we do? We resist. We build, we rise. We resist, we build, we rise. We resist, we build, we rise. Thank you. This event is organized by a diverse coalition of environmental justice, equality, and faith groups. They've all got tables in the back by the street, and they include the Vermont chapter of the Sierra Club. 350 Vermont. VPIRG, Rights and Democracy, VNRC, Vermont Interfaith Power and Light. So go see them, get involved, because our friends at Rights and Democracy always tell us, together, we win. Why am I here? We need a radically different energy path by the end of this decade. We're in for a world of pain. If you're hashtagging pictures, it's hashtag People's Climate March. And if you're on Snapchat, there's a geo filter for PCMVT. So spread the images, spread the word. And remember, this is a zero waste event, so clean up your stuff. And since it's almost green up day, clean up somebody else's stuff as well. Now I want to tell you what's happening in Washington, D.C. right now. All of the thousands and thousands of people who have traveled to the Capitol have encircled the White House. And what they're doing is they're sitting on the ground around the White House and they are tapping beats over their heart. A hundred beats over their heart to remind us that when it comes to climate change, as Brother Bill McKibben says, winning a little bit is the same as losing. And we have only won a little bit. So they're sitting in silence, and they are tapping, and they are reminding us that we resist, we build, we rise. We resist, we build, we rise. We resist, we build, we rise. One more time, we resist, we build, we rise. care about anything but themselves, but a different worldview, connecting racism, inequality, and environmental vulnerability can be our salvation. I care about you. We have capacity for deep compassion. So let's welcome our first speaker. He's on the board of Interfaith Power and Light. They'll be screening merchants of doubt all over the state, and if you want them to come to your community, go check out their table. He's the pastor of the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Jericho. Please welcome the Reverend Arnold Thomas! I need for you to repeat after me. The people are united. The people are united. The last shall soon be first. Your judgment day is coming fast. Your bubbles about to burst. As an African American growing up in the 60s, whenever one mentioned state rights, I oft it often triggered negative memories of states and local governments usually colluding with commerce to prevent 
the upward mobility of black people and people of color. We often found recourse in judicial branches of government or the executive branch of government when the Congress, reflecting their regional biases, would not advocate in our behalf. Brothers and sisters, I didn't have an affirmative impression of states' rights until I came to Vermont and realized that this was a state well advanced beyond the national norm. However, as an African American living today, I fear that our nation has placed its trust in false guides, in ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing, pursuing paths contrary and hostile to the advances we as people together have tried to achieve. Chemical and oil industry executives, along with their advocates, whose companies contributed to the cancer-causing pollutants poisoning our air, our water, and our ground, now occupy the offices of the EPA, the FDA, the Department of Interior, the Department of Justice, the State Department, the Supreme Court, and yes, even the White House. Offices we once entrusted with the responsibility to protect us against them. We are all contaminated by their acts of corporate callousness and greed. But the most contaminated are those who are poor, and people of color who live in the proximity of fossil fuel burning plants, toxic waste sites, and factory farms, who, who breathe the foul air, drink, bathe, swim, and baptize their children in filthy water. Brothers and sisters, none of us, none of our hands are clean. We are all responsible for the present day, but we can wake up from this nightmare still holding fast to a dream of what our nation and world can be when corporate capital is overwhelmed and defeated by communal compassion. The present administration, the present administration in Washington cannot have the final say. Monsanto, Dow, DuPont, and Exxon must not have the final say. This is your day. This is your time. And when we confront these principalities of power. Let's do so singing, the people are united. The last shall soon be first. Your judgment day is coming fast. Your bubbles bout to burst. Let's sing it. The people are united. The last shall soon be first. Your judgment day is coming fast. Your bubbles bout to burst. One more time. The people are united. The last shall soon be first. Your judgment day is coming fast. Your bubble is bout to burst. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Thomas. I have a feeling you're going to see attendance rise a lot at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Jericho. So organizer Rob Kidd tells me this is the moment in solidarity with DC. It's our beautiful photo opportunity. Everyone take a seat. This is going to be quick. 
We're going to have 10 beats over our heart in solidarity with the marchers in DC. And when we rise, we're going to rise loud. So I'll count it down. Five, four, three, two, one. steps here to get a look at the crowd. It's, it's just great. And most of what I want to say is already said on all these great signs. I've taken pictures of most of them. Senator, Senator Leahy is uh, on Capitol Hill today. You have the honor of uh, the other two members of the delegation a little later. Uh, this morning, the Senator and Marcel welcomed over 200 Vermonters who rode all night to get to Washington for the, to get to Washington for, for the uh, demonstrations there. So there's plenty of Vermonters there. You know, when you take a look around, uh, look at look at all the people. Some you may know. I thought I know everybody. I I know only a few. There's people you may not see every day. Uh, small business owners, bus drivers, farmers, students, teachers, uh, and so many other walks of life. But but today we've all come together. Our our, our lives we might not cross paths always. We came together today for one reason, and that's for climate change, to work to prevent climate change, and to send a very strong message. We're here today to send a signal that Vermonters care about the climate, and we care about the future of our planet. By, to, by gathering together today, there's, we're also sending a signal of solidarity that we will embrace the future together, and we're sending it to an administration that gleefully embraces ignorance. It's an administration that Senator Leahy has recently referred to an administration of know-nothingism. Their self-serving policies are based firmly on wishful thinking, and their heads are planted firmly in the sand. I saw that sign over there. The Senator thanks you for gathering here today. Now more than ever, we need to send this signal to the rest of the country and the world so that they know the people of Vermont are fighting to save our planet. We're fighting for those among us, the poor, the weak, the vulnerable, who will be hurt most by climate change. We are also fighting to conserve the species, the beautiful biodiversity of this planet, and the fragile ecosystems whose existence, very existence is threatened by climate change. Climate change is not just about us. There's lots of kids here today, and we are fighting for our children. And it's not just about the human race or a single generation. It's a problem that will span generation and impact all of us. And it means all of us need to be involved in the solution. Senator Leahy understands that most importantly, by gathering, we are sending this signal of solidarity to each other. Every day in Washington, the Senator is working on so many fronts against congressional leadership and administration who are seem intent on voiding, voiding the social contracts of this country and shredding our social safety nets, while at the same time, they void our bedrock environmental laws and shred our contract with future generations. This rally shows the people here today and those at other marches across the country in Washington that we are a united front. This is what normal looks like. This is important stuff right here and now. This is where momentum is created and change happens. 
This rally can be our source of hope and motivation and of energy to propel us forward to the challenges ahead. And know that on all fronts, Vermont's own Senator Patrick Leahy will be with you the whole way as we fight for the future, for the climate, for jobs, and for justice, because there is no planet B. Thank you. Thank you, Tom Barry. Tom rode his bicycle here today. Extra props to him. We also want to take a moment to shout out to all the members of the legislature who are here, particularly those of you in the Climate Caucus. Thank you for all of your hard work. Speaking of the legislature, our next speaker spent eight years as a representative from Burlington. She's an Oxfam climate change ambassador. She's the director for the Center for Whole Communities, and she is a force of nature unto herself. Please welcome Keisha Rahm. Thank you all. Thank you so much for being here on the 100th day since inauguration and the 99th day from the Women's March when many of us were gathered right here at the largest demonstration in the country. And I know sometimes it feels like all we have to celebrate on this 100th day is that it's 100 fewer days we'll have to deal with Donald Trump. But we have so much more to celebrate than that in these last 100 days. Thousands of you have got, are taken to the streets, have gone to detention centers, to airports, to say not one more, to keep all Americans here and welcomed. So thank you. 11,000 women across the country have said they are ready to run for office. So thank you. And no matter what Donald Trump says, Coal will never be king again. We have municipalities and states and utilities that are still going to move forward with the clean power plan and more. And we have solar jobs that are growing right here in the state. We are awake, we are woke, we are resisting, and we are better for it. And many of us know that this march and this gathering would have needed to happen anyway, regardless of who was president. You know, I grew up in a place where there were lots of communities where the air was, breathing the air was equivalent to smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. And if you drank the tap water, it would double your likelihood of getting certain types of cancer. And you were more likely to live near a brownfield site than you were a public park. It's called Los Angeles, you may have heard of it. And so when I think of moving to Vermont, I hope you all feel really blessed to be here and to breathe clean air and to fight for clean air every day. You know, I, I, I think a lot about the people who are, who are already climate refugees who face natural disasters and floods and rising waters. And I wouldn't go so far as to say that, but I came here because I'm a climate immigrant. I want my kids to breathe cleaner air. I want them to have a better, healthier community than I did, and that's what we all want for our children. And we shouldn't have to move to find it. Because some people can't move, and that's the spirit that I've always carried with me. When I was in high school and I was fighting for a recycling program, recognizing that most of my friends were worried about wearing red or blue because of gang activity, I met a man who was working to make Oakland carbon neutral, poverty free, and crime free at the same time. And he argued you could not do one without the other. His name was Van Jones. And he told a big crowd of environmentalists, just like are gathered here today, that if the social justice movement and the environmental movement don't meet in the middle, then we will never have a light at the crossroads. We will never be as strong as we need to be to overcome these dark forces in this country. We need to be that light at the crossroads. And so I invite you to think about the mobile home park residents who don't have access to clean drinking water in Vermont, 
who are 8% of the state population, but were 40% of those devastated by Hurricane Irene. I invite you to think of the migrant farm workers who are fighting every day for dignity and for justice and to step out of the shadows and speak for what they need. I invite you to think about the children who are most likely to be affected by lead poisoning and how lead, the budget for cleaning up lead has been cut in the federal budget. So those are the people we need to think about too and we need to invite into this space as we gather here today and we go forward. And I think a lot about how we do that together. And when I feel most despairing and need hope, I turn to a friend of mine He's an Iraq War veteran and the last speaker of Abenaki. His name is Brent Reeder. And Brent reminds me that the same word for village or community in Abenaki is also the word for watershed or bowl. That water is truly life and we are all in this together and we're stuck in the same bowl. So we better learn how to live with each other and see one another as humans and with dignity and that's the only way we're gonna be able to move forward. And I think a lot too, finally, about the analogy of the sequoia tree. And I'm not sure if any of you have seen or heard of the sequoia tree. They are the largest, tallest living things on land. They are beautiful, ancient, elegant, majestic trees. And you will never find one alone. They don't stand in the middle of a field and take nutrients from other trees to survive. Their roots don't go deep into the ground and cling and get stuck. They reach outward and they hold on to each other. And that is how they grow strong and tall and powerful together. And that's why I'm optimistic. Thank you. Thank you, Keisha. Now we're gonna have a good theme of justice for all. So let me hear you all say, justice for all. Justice for all. Justice for all. Justice for all! Justice for all! And I welcome back Chris Gruen with Justice for All! Thank you, Rob. I'm actually with WGDR, and I'm the director of WGDR. We're right over there, we've got a tent up, and right next to us is Justice for All. Mark Hughes, the director of Justice for All, is a recent programmer of ours. Have a round of applause for WGDR and volunteer media in your community. So, so while Bennett's working on the sound there, I'm going to ask everybody to do something. I've got a little uh, cell phone here. I'd like to ask everybody to stand up and hold up your signs. I want you to hold all your signs up really high in the air. I'm going to see if I can't get a pano of all of you beautiful people. Those of you behind me, come on up. Get your signs up. You ready? Here we go. Shout while you hold them. Thank you, everybody. You look beautiful. Phil McKibben said, Phil McKibben said on Amy Goldie the other day, he said, if this administration did anything for us, it was to make weekends for the resistance again. I like that. We're working so hard, making minimum wages Preaching to the choir from the same old stages and All I do is feed the rich, hypocrites I need to switch How I give it, how I live, there's no time for talking Only time for walking I don't blame you, my brother. I don't blame you, my sisters. Let's face the music together. Before the oceans rise, 
Before the soil dries, we gotta know a higher law. That's says justice is for all. And do everything that we can do. And make sure that we follow through. Yeah, we know a higher law. This is justice. this far free from so many cages kids can see the stars they'll be strong and courageous everybody has to serve for the change we all deserve who you choose is up to you this is how we begin to let it all in Let's make some music together Before the oceans rise Before the soil dries We gotta find that higher law This is justice is for all And do everything that we can do And make sure that we follow through Yeah, we know a higher law This is justice is paid for the promise we made oh can we find out now and can we write it down how the price is paid for the promise we made mm. I don't blame you my brothers I don't blame you my sisters Let's face some music together Before the oceans rise Before the soil dries We gotta find that higher law This is justice is for all And do everything that we can do Make sure that we follow through We gotta find a higher law This is justice is, let me hear you. We have to find that higher law that says justice is again. We gotta find that higher law that says justice is for all. This is justice is for all. Thank you, everybody. Pleasure to be here with you today. Beautiful Vermont. Thank you, Chris. Is the mic? There we go. I want to also give a shout out to our hardworking ASL interpreters. They're doing a beautiful job for us today. Don't forget to go check out all of the action tables from all of our partner organizations. And if you're feeling really fired up, know that Renewable Energy Vermont is looking for folks to testify at some upcoming public service board hearings. They've got a rule which would effectively ban all wind in Vermont anywhere. It's a little misguided, so if you want to speak up, go talk to the folks at REV. Next up, 
we have Mark Hughes, who is the executive director of Justice for All. They're working for racial justice within Vermont's criminal justice system. That's a huge one. So give an extra special love to Mark Hughes. exposure to pollutants that cause an array of ailments from heart disease to birth defects. Ain't that a damn shame? Yeah. Why don't you say it to me? That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. What? Yeah. That's what I thought you said. Here's something else. Communities of colors breathe in nearly 40% more polluted air than whites. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. You know what else I heard? African-American children are three times as likely to suffer from an asthma attack. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. What? That's a damn shame. I can't even hear you. That's a damn shame. <laughs> yeah. In the United States, race interacts with class to create special environmental and health vulnerabilities. People of color, however, face elevated toxic exposure levels even when social class variables, such as income and education and occupational status, are held constant. Race has been found to be an independent factor in predicting it, the distribution of air pollution, contaminated fish consumption, the location of abandoned toxic waste dumps, and lead poisoning in children. And that is a damn shame. That's a damn shame. 
not justice for all. We came to stand in solidarity for solutions that protect those who are on the front lines, who are affected by this catastrophic assault on our people and on our planet. If that clap was for me, I'd be okay, but it's not about me. This is about the climate. What did you say? So we stand with you all in this revolution, yeah? 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 yeah. yeah. This is a revolution. This is a revolution, right? Which brings me to the fourth reason that I came. Because I, wanna, I want you just to join me really quickly in just a, a, a couple of verses in a little song that we have here, and it goes kind of like this. It says, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. The revolution has come. Can you say that? All of you. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. The revolution has come. Okay, so now you, I want you to sing like you black people in church. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. The revolution has come. Keep singing it, keep singing it again. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. The revolution has come. Keep singing it, just you guys over here. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. The revolution has come. Keep singing that, keep singing that. You guys here? The revolution has come. The revolution has come. What a time. The revolution has come. The revolution has come. What a time, what a time. The revolution has come. I got something for you guys too. The revolution has come. Over here. We won. We won. We won. Quickly. 
In Vermont, people struggle and need additional supports to help them survive on those hot days. People experiencing environmental sensitivity are on the rise too and are forced to stay in their own homes because their bodies are compromised outside. They are often dismissed by fellow Vermonters, but they are truly the best allies in the battle for environmental justice. During Hurricane Katrina, 60% of the deaths were people ages 65 and older. And by 2030, it is projected that 350 million people worldwide will be affected by natural disaster. We cannot continue on a path of destruction that harms people with disabilities. When a storm hits, the destructive path leaves behind the souls of those who are often forgotten. When Hurricane Irene hit Vermont, some of you remember that our Vermont State Hospital was flooded and people who have psychiatric disabilities were displaced and moved to different locations throughout our state. Some people were moved to Second Springs in Williamstown where I live. These people who were just displaced from their state hospital settled in and then they asked what they could do to help. The people who many often dismiss or make fun of or don't want to talk to you because of the stereotype associated with psychiatric disabilities, we're asking to help others. And they did. They were matched with elders in Northfield who needed assistance cleaning up their homes. They picked up the glass in broken homes, they shared their stories, and they were part of the solution. When we come together in solidarity and work together, it is beautiful and powerful. Everyone in is really about everyone in. Our environment and our humanity depends on it. This is where our worlds need and must intersect. Government taking control and not being accountable to the people puts us on a path towards destruction. We will not let our government pit us against one another. And that's right. And we will be in solidarity and fight for equity, universality, and transparency. It is not acceptable to protect profits and corporate greed over this. Instead, we must be transparent and inspire imagination, strong ethics and cooperation. Climate under attack affects every one of us. So what are we going to do after making some noise today? When we're planning our next move, I encourage you to reach out to someone who has a different background than you do and work together to make change. When we are planning, better off that we're all included. When planning projects and working on climate issues intentionally, intentionally reach out to communities of color, people who are in the LGBTQIA community, and people with disabilities. So in the disability community, we have, um, we're, we're proud and we, we always um, end our speeches and our marches with this phrase called nothing about us without us. And I want to share that slogan with you today in solidarity, that there will be nothing about us without us. So let me hear you say it, nothing about us without us. Enrique Balcázar, soy parte de la comunidad migrante aquí en Vermont que ayudamos a sostener la industria lechera. My name is Enrique Balcázar and I'm a member of the immigrant community in Vermont 
and who we all pulled up the state's dairy industry. Hoy en día estamos siendo atacados por una administración que no respeta los derechos humanos. And today we find ourselves under attack from a presidential administration that has no respect for our human rights. Pero hoy estoy aquí representando a mi comunidad porque también Vermont es nuestra segunda casa y queremos un mundo mejor y que se respeten los derechos de la tierra. But I am here in front of you today because Vermont is our second home and we're going to stay here to fight for our rights and for a better world. Yo migré de Tabasco, México, donde el fracking y otras cosas como las inundaciones son cada vez peor, que están desplazando miles de personas de nuestros estados. And I come from the state of Tabasco, Mexico, where thousands of us have been displaced by fracking and by floods caused by extreme weather events. Es mi caso, por eso tuve que emigrar como un joven eh, de 17 años a los Estados Unidos, porque la pobreza y no poder terminar mis estudios y también las inundaciones en nuestros estados que me ha tocado vivir y perder todo algunas veces con mi familia y muchos amigos nos hace llegar hasta acá por una me vida mejor. And this is why... As a 17-year-old teenager, I had to come to the United States. I was forced to immigrate because of poverty, because of the flooding in our state that took away everything that my family, my friends, and I had. And that's why I'm here in the United States today. Seguiremos en la lucha por los derechos humanos. Seguiremos en la lucha por los derechos de la tierra. Y hoy vamos a demandar a Ben and Jerry's que hace dos años hizo un compromiso para asegurar los derechos de nosotros los trabajadores en los ranchos lecheros que, que tienen malas condiciones. El primero de mayo vamos a estar en Burlington, Vermont, a partir del mediodía y vamos a marchar hacia la tienda de Ben Jerry's para demandar que ya es tiempo de implementar el programa Leche con Dignidad. And so being here, we continue to fight for our human rights. We continue to fight for the rights of the earth. And that's why we are calling on Ben and Jerry's ice cream to make good on the commitment they made to immigrant dairy workers nearly two years ago that they would take responsibility for the poor conditions in their supply chain in which we work and live and join the Milk with Dignity program. And on Monday, on Monday we'll be hitting the streets again in Burlington, Vermont, marching to the Ben & Jerry's scoop shop to demand that Ben and Jerry's join Milk with Dignity. Muchas gracias por estar aquí y por defender los derechos de todos. Queremos un mundo mejor. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for being here and for standing in solidarity as we all fight for a better world. Thank you. Thank you, Kike, and thank you, Will, his translator. How many of your hearts were exploded by the bravery and heroism and spiritual dignity of the water protectors at Standing Rock. Who could be as brave as those people in the middle of winter fighting the forces of injustice? We've got one of those people here today, 
Sun Sunshine says he's just a guy who does stuff, but I don't believe it. Please welcome Indigenous activist, Sunshine! Hi. I just want to start by noting that we're standing on land stolen from Abenaki people. People who still live here today, they're not gone. This is not my land, and the colonial violence still directed at Abenaki and other indigenous people it is the, the same colonial violence that fracks gas, that builds pipelines, that on a macro systemic level continues to invest in fossil fuels even though sustainable alternatives exist. I was talking to my housemate this morning about kinship, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm giving away a big gay secret, uh, but it's nothing you couldn't Google anyway. But LGBTQ people are all family. As in, I went to Lampman Supermarket today and I saw a family member there. So as a gay trans man, I'm here also because even the if the best legislative gains we make for our LGBTQ youth, ensuring access to confidential counseling, gender neutral restrooms, and marriage equality, those gains mean little if there's no clean water to drink or clean air to breathe. As a person who grew up in Miami, I'm here because my hometown will soon be underwater. As a Sibonay Taino, a native Cuban, I'm here because the land of my ancestors will also soon be underwater. Enough about me though. I want to get to know you a little bit. So give me a cheer if I say something that resonates with why you are here today. How many people are here are parents concerned for their kids' future? What about grandparents? Yeah. How about kids and young people concerned about the planet we're leaving you? How many people here are for wind power? Solar power? How many people here see climate change as a human rights issue? <laughs> Who's here because you're a peacenik and you can see the direct connection between climate change, violence, and war? <laughs> How many people are here are concerned about animal and plant extinction? <laughs> I see you. I see you. How many people love skiing? How many people love snowboarding? How many people love maple syrup? How many people know that if those things go away because of climate change, Vermont will not be the same? How many people here want to stop pipelines? Fracking. How many people here are not going to back down? Who among us is going to take this energy that we're building and growing today and take it to their home? My family, we need all of us to make this work. We need the grandma with there's no planet B sign. We need the people getting handcuffed over at G. Prags Park in Hinesburg. We need people praying. We need legislators legislating. We need kids marching. So whatever it is that you're doing today, whatever brought you here, however you fit into this, thank you for being here. people of all persuasions and distinctions, please welcome the Solidarity Singers! Hello. We're 
We're here also because we think every good movement needs singing. So we are the Solidarity Singers of Central Vermont and some from Burlington. And we meet a couple times a month. We'll tell you more about that later. But um, we're going to sing a few songs for you, and we hope that you will join with us. We're going to start with a verse. I'm going to sing it by myself, and then we're going to try to lead everybody through it with solidarity. We're going to keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Never turning back. Never turning back. Okay, y'all ready to try that? Here we go. We're gonna keep on moving forward, keep on moving forward, keep on moving forward, never turning back, never turning back. We are strong and bold together, the lyrics in this in the verses because I think everybody knows the first verse um, so we shall not give up the fight we have only started we have only started 
We have only started. We shall not give up the fight. We have only started. We have only started. We have only started. So the second verse is, together we'll have victory, hand holding hand. And it goes on like that. <laughs> and the last one is, never ever put to flight, we are bound to win. So never ever put to flight, we are bound to win. And we're going to alternate. And join in with harmonies if you want. We shall not give up the fight, we have only started. We have only started. We have only started. We shall not give up the fight, we have only started. We have only started. We have only started. Together we'll have victory, hand holding hand. Hand holding hand. Hand holding hand. Together we'll have victory, hand holding hand. Hand holding hand. Hand holding hand. We shall not give up the fight, we have only started. We have only started. We have only started. We shall not give up the fight, we have only started. We have only started. We have only started. Never ever put to flight, we are bound to win. We are bound to win. We are bound to win. Never ever put to flight, we are bound to win. We are bound to win. We are bound to win. We shall not give up the fight. We have only started. We have only started. We have only started. We shall not give up the fight. We have only started. We have only started. We have only started. We shall not give up the fight. We have only started. We have only started. We have only started. We shall not give up the fight. We have only started. We have only started. We have only started. So that song originated in South Africa as a resistance to apartheid. Um, we're the Solidarity Singers, and we meet at the Universal, um, the UU Church right across from the library in Montpelier, first and third Sundays um, from 12.30 to 2, if you want to join us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Solidarity Singers! So, our next speaker has spent the last 11 years in Congress, of all places, fighting for Vermont and justice for all. He is fresh from Washington, D.C. He's hosed off all the swamp water, and he's here to share today with you. Please welcome Representative Peter Wood. Thank you all for coming. Donald Trump, take a look at Montpelier. You know, he's got a he's got it mixed up. Donald Trump is afraid of climate change. He should be afraid of us. But you know what? We're gonna prevail. He's going to lose a hundred days, a hundred days trying to roll back the progress we've been making on climate change. But we are here today to make sure we succeed, the planet survives, our kids thrive, and he does not get his way with big oil and big carbon. And think about it, a hundred days, here's some of the things that President Trump has done. The first day he's in office, January 20, he removes all references on the White House website to climate change as if you can erase it. Well, he followed up with a gag order that nobody in federal government could speak outside of the White House on climate change. Well, let me say what you know is true. President Trump, 
You may clean off the website and you may gag some federal employees, but you can't, you cannot stop us from our signs and you cannot stop us from speaking out. And he was just getting rolling. President Obama stopped the Keystone Pipeline. And President Trump is trying to get that rolling again, but our friends and our neighbors in Nebraska are saying no to the Keystone Pipeline. And then it is an attack on science. This is pretty astonishing, even for Trump. He said that any studies that came out of the EPA by scientists had to be reviewed by political appointees before they could be published. You know, and then President Trump took away the regulation that we passed at the end of the Obama administration to make certain that coal, that coal companies couldn't dump their coal sludge into the rivers and streams of Appalachian coal country where people need jobs, but they also need clean water. We're going to fight back on that. We are not going to let those coal workers suffer from polluted water. They deserve clean water and clean air like all of us. You know, aside from being wrong, the President Trump policies are just plain stupid. And let me tell you why. Anybody notice where the new jobs in Vermont are coming from? Anybody notice where the new jobs in America are coming from? Sto solar, plant solar installers, 26 bucks an hour. That's a good job to get started. We've got 600% increase in the number of clean energy jobs in this country in the past 10 years. And you know, what it, what it tells you is that, you know, you don't have to be motivated because you do or don't believe in climate change. We know there is climate change, but how about this for motivation? If you lean into the challenge that you face, you're actually going to create jobs and create opportunity and create a stronger economy. And the other thing every one of you knows right here is we've got challenges in this country, in this world, with the forces of globalization that don't care what's going on. In, they don't care what's going on in our neighborhood. We care about what's going on in our neighborhood. And the more we can generate clean, renewable power in our neighborhoods, in our community, the stronger we are, the better the jobs we have and the stronger and more vital our communities will be. So President Trump, get over it. Clean energy is on the way. It's like a wave from Montpelier to Washington, to Des Moines, Iowa, out through the west in Montana and into San Francisco. People are rallying because they want to save the planet they want to create strong jobs in good communities, and they know that our common obligation to one another is to do everything that we can to leave this planet cleaner than we found it. And I'll tell you, you look around here and you see the kids, the young people, the future, they get it. President Trump, throw out Scott Pruitt, get rid of those advisors, talk to some of these kids here, and let's make clean energy the reality of the future. Thank you all for being here.
from the mighty Vermont Worker Center and a longtime Brattleboro community activist. Please welcome Sheila Linden. Look at our Vermont state and our 
communities and drive our hybrid cars, have solar panels on our homes, have compost in our backyards and rides our bikes. It is not enough. Who agrees with me out there? We must understand that though these are great, great ways to contribute to the overall climate injustice, that it does not reach the root. Yes, we are great, but if these things do not address the root of our problems, they do not move our movement forward. When I was in Paris, I met people from around the world, around the world, and even people from Vermont. I will never forget their stories. Aramoff's young kids. I heard stories about how people came into villages and took people's lands and took out their crops, their plants for the survival, not only for the soil, for their land that they live off, but to give the nutrients. They took away their men from their regular jobs that they would do because they no longer existed. They poisoned their communities. They poisoned their water. And they raped their young women and children. These are the stories that people have to hear. And I have this stage to tell you the truth. That though you may not see it here in Vermont, does not mean it doesn't exist. Climate injustice is deeper than what we see on the surface. We must not only divest from all the resources that continue to destroy us, but to reinvest in the people and the systems that work. We have people dying. Right now while we rally, people are dying. We're lucky enough, if we call it luck, to live in Vermont, to live in the North, to live more green. But as many of the other speakers said, they're coming for us, and they're already here. When I listened to people's stories around the world, what they shared, these were people living it. These weren't people who came to do a speech that was sent by somebody. These were people who were coming from their own communities of devastation. People that were pleading for help, asking for change, and needing our solidarity. When I came back to Vermont, I realized that that wasn't just some storybook, some mystery over in Global South, when all those other countries the stuff that I heard was happening right here in Vermont. To our indigenous lands here being taken, to an infrastructure of a pipeline when there's a law that says we have or not supposed to have any pipeline, to Bennington's water. This is real. It is here. It is not just the global south. It's not just the inner city. And it's not just the coastlines. It's well in life here in Vermont. I want to invite us to understand how racism, patriarchy, and classism are neatly, neatly woven thread in the foundation for what we see here today. Give me an amen if you agree with me. Amen. I can't hear you. Give me an amen if you agree with me. Amen. I want you to say it with me. We must understand how racism, patriarchy, and classism is at the root of our climate injustice. Say it with me. How racism, patriarchism, and classism is at the root of our climate injustice. One more time. Say racism, patriarchism, classism is at the root, at the root, at the root, at the root 
of climate injustice. This is not about climate change. For me, what this is really about is systems change. We cannot live on a planet that's dead. And until we decide that we need to work together and understand that that neatly threaded woven system is what plays against us, we will forever be divided. If we do not stand up for our immigrant brothers and sisters, our refugee brothers and sisters, our queer and trans brothers and sisters, our women, our youth, our POCs, people of color, we will always, always fall short. It is imperative that we understand that this is about systems and that we must change the systems of racism and capitalism for all of us to survive. So I say this, I have a theme going on this year. It is not about showing up. Some of you might have shown up here today because there might be something you want to put on your resume. I'm for real. It's a laugh. You can laugh because for some of us it's true. But I invite all of you to mark up your resume with a lot more than coming to this rally and being a part of this movement. I ask you to join the revolution and to put that on your resume. And in closing, it is not about just showing up. It's about how you show up. It is all of our job in this movement to help change the system. That does not work and to replace it with what does. It is our job to listen to the frontline communities that are the most impacted and have the skills, the knowledge, and have been working on this issue since day one. Why? Because they have no choice. I implore you to stand with our frontline communities, to love them, to embrace them, and to be with us. And I ask you in closing to say, when I say systems, you say change. Systems! Change. Systems! Change. When I say systems, you say change. change. Systems! Change. Systems! Change. Systems! Change. Systems! Change. I can't hear you. That was not so great. Let's try one more time. When I say systems, you say change. Systems. Change. Systems. Change. Systems. Change. Systems. Change. Systems. Sheila Linton, everybody. Sheila Linton, remember her name. So grateful to have her. Thank you, Sheila Linton. Next up, we have a gentleman. We have a farmer. We have a warrior for the well-being of the world. We have the most progressive lieutenant governor in the country. And the official sponsor of this event, here we have David Zuckerman. Thank you, Kathy. And we all, some of you may not know how lucky we are to have Kathy Bloom. She has been such a champion activist on climate change, and she was very sick last year. And I am so happy and, and full of love to see her back at the podium rallying people the way she has. Thank you, Kathy. So many great groups helped put this together. I get to be a sponsor, but it's really the legwork folks that make it happen. Sierra Club, 350.org, Renewable Energy Vermont, VPER, Vermont Earth to Faith Power, Rights and Democracy, and so many others, and all the groups that are out there tabling and giving information. And I list them to thank them, but also to ask you to join them. Join us. Join us in the act of constant vigilance in our system of democracy. Because we do need to upend it. We've got some great leaders here, but not enough. 
We've got some great legislators here who sometimes need a little support from you, calling them, urging them to do more, urging them to make climate change and racial justice and economic justice and so many of the issues we've been talking about, front burner issues. And I want to say, just quickly with respect to Sheila, I don't know about you, but I've been on the campaign trail before, and I sure think she'd be a pretty awesome governor, don't you? We need people like her and others who have spoken to get involved in this system and change it. And here in Vermont, you can do that. You can run. You can run for local office. You can run for your school board and try to get environmental agendas into the classroom and education. You can work to get on your local select board so you can help work with your law enforcement to make sure that they are unbiased in their policing practices. You can get involved and you must. And if you don't run for office, that's okay. You can also call your legislators. How many people here, please raise your hand, if at some point in the last three months, you reached out to your legislator on an issue? That's pretty darn good. Better than most crowds, so I'm really pleased to see it. But some of you are new to that idea. Some of you haven't done that yet. And I'm sorry I talked so fast. Are we doing okay? I'm speaking quickly because there's a big, big name coming up and he's already here. So I'm trying to get through my notes as fast as I can. But seeing so many of you here who can be involved and pick up the phone, most legislators only hear from constituents five or ten times on a few issues. Look at how many thousands we have here today. If you all picked up the phone and called every couple weeks, and instead of making it a spectator sport, you made democracy a participation sport, we would change what's going on in this building. We've been, we've been noted by the Union of Concerned Scientists as one of the best states in the country on clean energy. But I have to tell you, I was just on the, on the phone on the radio to WGDR and they said, what could people call now in the last week on climate change? And I said, you know, there's not really a bill right now in the state house around climate change. We need more leadership out of the fifth floor of that building, the governor's office on climate change. We need more leadership here in this building on climate change, but that's only gonna happen with your involvement. And I'm going to tell you two or three quick things you can do to be involved. And I'm going to let you know about a few other reps and senators who are here today that are here standing with you. But just this coming week, on there are public hearings about wind energy and about sound uh, levels that right now are proposed at the Public Service Board to really put the brakes on wind energy. Not compromise, not some things that can be worked out, but levels so low, they're lower than basically anywhere else in the world. That's gonna stop our tread forward on renewable energy. One in Bennington on Monday at one o'clock. Six o'clock optional dinner at the Bennington Free Library. See, they don't even want me telling you about the meetings. There's a meeting in Lowell at the Lowell Grade School, 52 Gelo Park Road on Tuesday at two o'clock. Uh, May 2nd at 7 o'clock, and here in Montpelier on Thursday at 7 p.m., again with dinner at 6 o'clock and an optional strategy session at the Renewable Energy Vermont office, 33 Court Street. The public hearing is at Montpelier High School. Going to those kinds of public hearings, submitting comments, calling your legislators, that's what's going to change our future. Are you in it with me? And I was going to wax on about farming and how life has changed in farming with climate change, but you know it. But I do want to give a shout out to a few legislators who are here from around the state who are part of the Climate Caucus, which has grown, I believe, to over 60 members, which is a pretty big number in Vermont in any state. It's the biggest caucus we have. Representative Jay Hooper, Molly Burke, Sandy Haas, Mike Kentachka, Trevor Squirrel, Dave Yacoboni, and Valerie Stewart are all here. Let's give them a round of applause. And I believe there's, if I missed anybody, I apologize. I know there's at least three senators here, Allison Clarkson and two members of the Natural Resources and Energy Committee, 
Mark McDonald, and Chris Pearson. All those three singers, give them a shout out. And I want to give my friend Chris an extra shout out. He, years ago when he was in the house, co-founded the Climate Caucus. Years before there were Climate Caucuses in any state, he thought of having one here. It was one of the first in the country, and it's now the biggest caucus. Give it up again for Chris for thinking ahead. So my final call, stay involved. If you can go for a jog three days a week, you can have a book reading club, you can have a poker group, whatever it is you make time for in the week. Can you make 15 minutes for democracy and our mother earth and all of the injustice issues? Can you do that? Thank you. I'm doing it, you're doing it, we're gonna do it together. Thank you so much. Rights and democracy, their core principles are jobs, justice, and climate. On May 11th, they'll be offering a webinar on movement politics, so check them out. And right now, please welcome one of their core organizers, Elise Graves! Elise! I'm the lead organizer at Rights and Democracy Vermont, where we work very hard every day to fight for economic, social, and environmental justice in the state of Vermont. Yeah. I want to see your face in the air if you are ready to fight back. Yeah. I think everyone here can agree that we have a right to clean air clean water, and that if we're going to solve this climate crisis, we need clean energy. And we know that it takes all of us. You are one of thousands of people here today and one of millions marching globally because the people in power right now don't believe that we need to be doing everything in our power to stop the threat that is climate change and the destruction of our planet. Many of them don't even believe in climate change. Is that okay with us? No! no! It is time for us to build a new system that puts people and the planet first. A system where we set the priorities and goals to create sustainable and healthy communities. And a system where the way that we make the decisions is up to us and not the people and not the corporations who profit at our expense and the expense of our communities and the people that we love. Today, Rights and Democracy is launching our campaign for energy and democracy, a vision for Vermont that harnesses our natural resources and empowers our communities to solve our climate crisis. It is time to end the inequity in our system that allows our natural energy resources to be financially strip mined for the benefit of distant communities and distant owners. Because wouldn't we rather see the power and those profits be kept local to benefit all of us here in Vermont? We need to improve access, regardless of income, not only to renewable energy, but also to the ability to own that power. The climate crisis will be solved by us, the people. It doesn't matter what cutting edge technology we have, if we're not working to disrupt the status quo that exploits us and pits us against each other so that we can't see the thing that we all have in common, a desire to live healthy, safe, and dignified lives. This is what will unite us to fight back, and we can start right here in Vermont. And we have to, because even here, we see the same systemic problems in a state budget that fails to meet the needs of working and low-income Vermonters. We see the same systemic problem when it comes to a failure to provide livable, livable wages or universal health care for everyone. And too often, the people who profit the most are the ones who are calling the shots and making the policies. And most of them are not just going to give us what we want and need out of the kindness of their hearts. 
We have to put the power back into the hands of the people and our communities who have the most to lose and also the most to gain. We have no choice but to turn this around. And we have a lot of work to do before we get to an economy that puts people and the planet first. So today we rally, and tomorrow we get to work. In a few weeks, Rights and Democracy will launch Democracy Summer from protest to power a summer-long statewide tour to build unity across movements and across our communities, to take the energy from all of these national mobilizations back into our neighborhoods, to create change on a local level right here in our state. And I hope that you will join us because together we win. So in the summer of 2015, our very own Senator Bernie Sanders began going around the country in his campaign for president saying that we didn't just need to elect a new president, but we needed to build a massive grassroots movement, that we needed a political revolution. And since that time, tens of millions of people have joined that call. And even since the election, he hasn't stopped helping build this movement. And we are thrilled to have him join us here today. Thank you. You look great from up here. Let me thank the Sierra Club, 350 Vermont, VPIRG, Rights and Democracy, VNRC, and the Vermont Interfaith Power and Life for helping to organize this event. And let me, let me thank all of you who are here, the hundreds of thousands who are marching in Washington, D.C. People all over this country and all over the world who are demanding that we are going to have a planet that is healthy and habitable for our children and our grandchildren. Our message today is simple and straightforward. We will fight Donald Trump who thinks climate change is a hoax. We will fight the head of the EPA who is trying to dismantle virtually every environmental regulation that protects our air, our water, and our food. We will fight the fossil fuel industry. Which is more worried about their short-term profits than the future of this planet. We will fight the Koch brothers, the second, the second wealthiest family in America who make most of their money from fossil fuel and who are pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into candidates who refuse to acknowledge the reality of climate change. Our job today, tomorrow, and every day is to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. Our job is to create millions of new jobs in wind, solar, geothermal, and other clean technologies. Our job is, when we get rid of fossil fuel, to have clean air, 
that does not cause asthma and other health problems. Right now, in terms of the fight for our cl climate and for our planet, there is bad news and there is good news. The bad news, as all of you know, is that the global average temperature has risen two degrees Fahrenheit since the late 1800s. The bad news is that according to NASA, the concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide is today over 400 parts per million for the first time. The bad news is that global, uh, most global warming has occurred in the past 35 years with 16 of the 17 warmest years occurring since the year 2000. The bad news is that the Koch brothers and the fossil fuel industry are spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to prevent states and communities from transforming their energy systems. That's the bad news, but there is a lot of good news. And the good news is in this country and around the world, we are winning the fight. Today, wind and solar are now the cheapest sources for new electric power. The average cost for new solar power in 2016 was 13% less than the year before, while wind dropped 11%. And corporate America even understands this reality. They are investing in new renewable capacity, double what was the case with fossil fuel in 2016. Listen to this. Wind power accounts for more than 80%, 80% of the new electric generating capacity built in the Midwest and the Great Plains in the last five years. In Iowa, 40% of the electricity comes from wind. Texas is producing enough wind energy to power over five million homes. Solar energy has grown a hundredfold in the past decade. In Chile, solar is now delivering, or will soon deliver, the cheapest electricity any place, anywhere in the world. In February, Denmark generated enough wind energy on a windy day to power the country's entire electric needs. And right back here in little old Vermont, more families are investing in geothermal and air source heat pumps, which can save 70% on heating and 40% on cooling bills. Listen to this, since 1989, despite good growth in Burlington, Burlington is now consuming 4% less electricity than it did in 1989. And Green Mountain Power is one of the most innovative and progressive private utilities in the entire country. Brothers and sisters, this is a fight not just for ourselves. This is a fight for our kids, our grandchildren, and the future of this planet. This is a fight that we cannot afford to lose. As Dave Zuckerman and others have mentioned, 
In order for us to win, we need to bring in this state and in this country millions of people into the political process. People who are prepared to take on the fossil fuel industry, who are prepared to take on the insurance and drug companies, who are prepared to take on Wall Street and the big money interests. Our fight, our fight is for clean energy. Our fight is for democracy. Our fight is for a government that represents all of us, not just the 1%. Thank you all. Thank you. WGDR, Solar City, Main Street Landing, Renewable Energy Vermont, the Little Act Foundation, Lake Champlain Committee, Catamount Solar, Tony Klein, and Bill Stetson. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to do this. And without, remember, you, all of you, this revolution is dependent on you. This is not one day, it's a movement. So bring this movement home. <laughs> 